Welcome to New Day Cleveland. I'm Natalie Herbick and this hour we are taking you on a little tour of Olmsted Falls, specifically here in Grand Pacific Junction. Let me tell you, this is honestly the first time I've been here and now I know what I've been missing out on. It is so authentic and yet you have this revitalized district. You can park, walk around all day. There's shops, there's great little bites to eat. And you know, that's actually a requirement on this show, right? Places to eat that are absolutely delicious. So that is going to be one of our first stops. That was white wine, helped to glaze some of that. I know I get excited about food and I'm always really happy when I sit down in front of some delicious meals, but I must say, Tom, I think here at Mateo's, you have outdone yourself. Your chef, Tony, is he works wonders in the kitchen back there. He looks to be authentic Italian and it shows in the meals, I would say. Tony is definitely great. He's probably the main reason for our success. People come here and rave about the food and I'd like to take some credit for it, but unfortunately I can barely boil water. So he's, <laughs> well, he's the reason. The theme here was a casual Italian. And so that's what we tried to incorporate with some casual Italian dishes, but I have put some, a little spin on a few items. And then what we're gonna do is put it in the pan here, a little more color and I'll be flipping it over here. We're doing real well here. It's uh, the neighborhood, its response has been great. Uh, doing over 700 and some covers a week. A little bit of parsley. And that's that. Are you Italian? Yeah, I'm 100% You're 100% bread. <laughs> I was going to say, why Italian? I didn't ask you that in advance. I should know that. It, Mateo's, what, where does the Mateo's That's come actually from? my mother's maiden name. Okay. And I grew up with my grandmother living with us for several years. And uh, she used to make all the homemade pastas, homemade sauces. We oh. had her traditions. And every Sunday, have the family and pot of sauce going when you woke up in the morning. and. It was great. That's why I love being Italian, I must <laughs> say. You know, now, let's, can we dig in? I won't physically dig in yet, okay. but the dish in front of you. This is one of our signature dishes. This is the lemon chicken with linguine, and this is all Tony's homemade sauce. Uh, it's homemade pasta from Ohio City Pasta, and this is our number one selling dish. Number one? Number one Number selling. one, folks, right there. The lasagna, I, I mean, have you ever seen a big enough portion like this, like lasagna? I can't get over this. That is, Tony came up with that, and just this past week, we've had two people tell us it's, been, it's the best lasagna they've ever had. We participated in the Scene Magazine. That best, means I gotta try it. Best of Cleveland, and uh, our rep there told us that everybody was raving about the lasagna. It's all homemade, it's homemade I, noodles. Finally, I hear there are little meatballs in here too, like you would get a wedding soup. Yeah, there's tiny meatballs, there's sausage. Uh -oh. Well, I can't give you the entire recipe, so. Good? That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. And I was excited about that dish, but this is amazing. Tell me that doesn't look phenomenal. Mm. That's uh, angel hair pasta with uh, calamari uh, on top of it. It's uh, sa sauteed calamari with uh, some peppers and um, little sure tomatoes in there. I want to sure. try a little bit of the calamari. So these portions look huge. Or, uh, well, it's an Italian restaurant. You gotta cut. Yeah, we have nobody. Everybody leaves here with a doggy bag. So, for calamari, it's insane. When you have someone that's back in that kitchen there that just loves Italian food, lives and breathes it. I mean, I'm guessing it really shows in the quality of their work. It does. Tony's. I don't know how many hours he puts here in here, but it's it's amazing, and he makes everything himself. And you go back there, he's making sauces. He's cutting chicken, everything we do here is fresh. There are a lot of places that claim to be great Italian cuisine restaurants. And I don't think they all live up to the theater because it's really not that authentic. You come here and this just seems so authentic to me from the salads that I saw on someone else's table, the drinks. I mean, you talk about drinks here. It's a great place to come for cocktails too. We have great bartenders. They make all the, you know, our own drinks. They come up with new concoctions every week. We have special cocktails and uh, they really enjoy that waiting pineapple on the flip looks amazing, and I know Did you, you have, try that yet. Or no? I didn't try oh. that yet. That's the absolute limeade, and then you have this Italian Paloma here too. There are so many reasons to come. How many days a week are you open? We're open seven, mm. seven days a week. Cheers. That is delicious. I really am in love with this place. I'm telling you, I will be back. We're right here, Mateo's. 
We're going to be full after this, let me tell you. I think so. Tom, thank you so much for having us My in. pleasure. Thanks for coming out. You do not want to miss this stop. Okay. I think we're full now, at least I am just by looking at this. So I'm going to send you off to do a little bit of shopping next at a place where you can find hidden treasures, let's just say. Second time around is an antique store, Ohio handmade store, vintage. Um, we also have a kitchen with Amish jams and jellies, chocolates, cookies. Um, instead of having all antiques, we decided to open it up to uh, everybody, um, an interest in anything. So you can find uh, toys, antique toys, uh, jewelry, uh, handmade soap, and all kinds of antiques. What I usually do is uh, I, I rent space in here. There's 42 vendors, so we have a variety of a lot of different things, but I also am very picky about what's in here. When you walk into the shop, we have a, uh, we have a checkout room, we have a counter with uh, vintage jewelry and other little items. Uh, as you walk down the hall, we have names above each doorway. Uh, the first room is the kitchen cupboard, which has the Amish jams and jellies and cookies, candies, um, all kinds of different vintage uh, kitchenware. In this room here is the Ohio handmade room. Everything is made in Ohio. Uh, most of the people in this room are local. Uh, we have uh, chenille be uh, pillows made out of bedspreads. We have some clothing with lace. Uh, this is all upcycled repurposed items. We also have some handmade jewelry, uh, candles, and uh, a lady from actually North Olmsted makes soaps and hand creams and lip balms. One of the great things we have in the shop is the mason jars, which is a real hot item with Pinterest. A lot of weddings, people are using mason jars. We have the different lids uh, coin for a coin bank. We have a lid for the, the pump and a flower frog. Um, a couple other accessories. We also have these wonderful license plate dust pans. Uh, this is Ohio. We have a lot of Ohio. My father-in-law, who is 92, makes these. Uh, he's been doing it probably for about five or six years. We have the Ohio, and in the other bin, we have all kinds of different states. You can pretty much find any state you want. Back behind the building, we have the garden shed. Uh, we use it seasonally. We have a, a boutique, B-O-O boutique for Halloween. Um, and we have a Christmas cottage. And right now we have the garden cottage. Uh, we have a sitting area. We put uh, all kinds of items throughout the gardens. And we have a little shed called the garden cottage shed. And we have all kinds of outdoor and garden items in the outdoor shed. I love this area only because of the, the atmosphere and of course my favorite part is back here because it's real quiet and it's really cute back here and we get to use the umbrella tables and it's very uh, serene and if you're sitting back here with all the garden items it's just a great place to be. I always tell everybody they need to walk around twice because you walk around there's so much to look at that you walk around once and you always miss something. A little advice to make your shopping trip a second time around even better. If you see something you like, buy it then. The prices are so good, those items fly off the shelves. Still to come, we are going to a place where you have every travel need for your dogs and more. I realized that people need travel kits for their dogs, and so we came up with our line of travel kits. enjoying our show so far. This next stop is for the dogs, literally. We are talking about anything you need for traveling from a day of doggy daycare to vacationing, maybe a little walk. It's all inside of the train depot. Nifty Dog Shop is a longtime vision of ours. Um, I realize that people need travel kits for their dogs. And so we came up with our line of travel kits. What it includes is a tote bag for all the things you need when you're traveling with your dog. Um, we also have a portable bowl for water or food and we have a bag 
that you can put up to 20 cups of dog food in. And then we have other accessories, um, a little carabiner and a bed, a blanket, um, and a luggage tag um, if you're boarding your dog or taking your dog to daycare. We just opened here uh, last year. Uh, we expanded into a line, lines of toys, um, not our own. We carry um, common brands and some lesser known brands too. Uh, but we try to emphasize eco-friendliness. Um, we have a lot of toys that are made from recycled materials, recycled leather, and tougher toys because so many people tell me that their dogs just tear up the toys. So we try to carry things that'll last. If you're out with your dog at the dog park or just on a walk and you don't want them to come back in the house or the car because their feet are all muddy, you can just use that um, suds and toss cloth which is infused with shampoo. So when you wet it just a little bit, uh, it suds is up with oatmeal shampoo and uh, you can clean your dog on the go. We started a little gallery with art and other gifts to help people celebrate their specific dog breed that they love and just other fun things too. When we found this building, um, we said how perfect is that to have a travel shop for dogs in a train depot. So this building was originally built in 1892 over in Middleburg Heights and it was the train station. Um, on this side, the passengers waited, and on the other side uh, was the luggage and baggage area. So uh, it's, it was moved here to this location in 2008. Sit. Good girl. She's a whippet that we rescued about a year ago, and uh, this has been the greatest thing for her to socialize because she was so shy when we first got her. So she loves to greet everybody, and make friends with everyone who comes in. Take some time to browse around um, because we do carry some things that are harder to find, our treats. Um, we have an all organic line of treats that we carry too. And most of our treats are really good for sensitive and even allergic dogs. Um, so we really just try to emphasize a healthy lifestyle and carry healthy products that uh, help make it fun and easy to take your dog with you. Nifty Dog is open seven days a week. You can also shop online. I'm told she ships all over the world. My next stop is a place where you can find a gift for just about any occasion and it happens to be right here. There are, as I have quickly found here, so many amazing little shops and restaurants here in historic Grand Pacific Junction, one of them being the Artist's Colony. This is Patty's place. Patty, I think that you have just about everything for any milestone in someone's life as far as gifts go here in your store. Well, we really do try. And I like to think that we're kind of an old-fashioned department store, a little bit of something for everyone. Well, speaking of department stores, purses I think are one of the biggest things people buy yes. women in department stores and you have a great line that's right behind us right now this is a local line Ohio line. yes it's called Stephanie Dawn they are manufactured in Van Wert Ohio they were the original manufacturer for a very famous brand of uh, quilted handbags and when that brand moved its manufacturing overseas they said this is an opportunity for us to make purses right here in Ohio the original quality, all machine washable, and more affordable. And we think beautiful colors and patterns. They're absolutely gorgeous. And then when you talk about more things for the ladies, I know I see a lot of scarves, I see um, jewelry yes. around. Yes. What was your whole idea when you put the store together that you wanted people to feel like when they came in here? Well, we have been here for 15 years and we have evolved quite a lot in that time pan, mainly because I think we like to listen to our customers. Mm -hmm. And we, if they suggest things, we try to find it. Now, going back to the milestone gifts that you mm -hmm. have, you have something for, I saw when babies are born, yes, yes. for weddings. Weddings, birthdays, anniversaries. We do a lot for weddings, anniversaries, babies, and a whole baby and kids section upstairs. And then we also um, have thoughtful, inspirational gifts if someone's you know, not doing well or 
you know, just want something thoughtful. Now, what about the uh, pictures that you have um, that you've framed over in the corner there? Okay, we have framed prints from a local framer in Rocky River, and she has a very big following. Her, paint, her prints go in and out. She's here three, four times a week. And I saw the doll clothes too. Yes. <laughs> Yes. They hit? They are. Cindy um, makes our American Girl doll clothes. They fit 18 inch dolls. They also fit the 15 inch Bitty Baby doll. They are mostly all original designs of hers and each one is exquisite. Now those candles, not only when I walked by did they smell unbelievable, <laughs> but they're very unique candles. I've never seen wicks like that in the mm -hmm. middle of a candle before. How does it work? It is very unusual but they work very well. They're called spiral candles and they are made in North Dakota. And you begin by lighting the wick on the outside of the candle and then it will spiral around. And as the wax folds in, you um, light the wood wick in the middle. So a small candle will burn a total of 30 hours and a large candle up to 50 hours. And he's looking thing, I tell you. So there are so many different things that you can buy as gifts for people here. And then to top it off, if you need a one-stop shop and you're running a little behind, you also have cards, right. depending on the occasion too. Yes, we have greeting cards for every occasion you can imagine, from pretty thoughtful cards to humorous cards. I mean, and if anybody ever is looking for a card, we're always here to help. I think that's kind of what stands mm -hmm. us apart from bigger stores. If you need help, you just ask. And you have, is it true, people that come from really all over the yes, world to yes, visit you? we do. We have customers that can walk here right down the street that live local right here in Olmstead Falls and then they bring their families and then we get people that come from um, all over the world. It's really quite exciting to see somebody speaking a different language and and getting to know the area. And we are just continuing to explore <laughs> We're just getting started oh, here. God. This used to be the jail for Homestead Falls. There's something that's very, very common, for me anyways, about being with bees. Still to come, something's buzzing inside of the former jailhouse. We're heading behind bars after this. Welcome back to our road trip here in Olmstead Falls. Hope you're enjoying yourself. I know I am. And our next stop is taking us to jail. Inside of the former jailhouse, you'll find a lot of reasons to love bees. <laughs> Grand Pacific Junction. It has a bunch of historically restored buildings. You'll find us right about in the middle of it. There's always plenty of parking. There's a lot of uh, curiosity shops. This used to be the jail for Homestead Falls. Enough room for a potbelly stove, a desk, a chair, and one cell of a cot. Linda and I were at uh, the Loring County Fair, and we walked into the bee barn one day, and both of us at the same time said, I've always wanted to do this. So that we got two beehives, and at one time we had like 68 because you have to take your bees and divide them each year. This was before colony collapse. Right now, we have uh, 37. With that colony collapse and the bees dying off, a, a beehive that you established this year will not give you honey till next year. The problem is the bees don't make it till next year. It will flavor itself with according to what's blooming. In the spring, you'll get an almost water white honey with a real light, quick off of your tongue and floral taste to it. But then as those flowers die off and the summer honey or summer flowers bloom, it changes. And then it changes all again come fall with, to thicker, more richer, stays in your mouth uh, longer and it has a creamy sort of taste to it. And that's the uh, goldenrod. The infused ones, I've taken the honey and infused it with mint f uh, flowers from the garden, or hot peppers, or any other herb, or even flavoring. It, it's raw, it's unpasteurized honey. No heat's been added to it. All the health benefits are there in it. So it's a healthy honey, and it is local. So people will start uh, taking honey for their allergies, and more people are turning away from the pills and the doctors. You can collect from your bees pollen, Pollen is taken as a vitamin supplement. 
When I harvest the honey, I also harvest beeswax. You get quite a bit of beeswax, and of course, the first thing you do is you make your candles, which I've got quite a few of those here. But then I pour them into little one ounce blocks and give them to Linda, and she does hand creams, face creams, lip balms, uh, beauty aids with them, soaps and everything else. My wife makes all these jams, jellies, and relishes. Uh, hot pepper jellies, a fig jam, a fig and tangerine, strawberry, serrano, pe hot pepper jellies. And we make all these uh, ourselves. We make it the old fashioned way, one batch at a time. And using cane sugar, no, no high fructose corn syrup, no uh, butter is used in it, no dairy, and um, no preservatives. I sell out here and we also have a place out at the West Side Market. There's something that's very, very calming. Opening up a beehive and having bees fill the air, have them crawling all, and I just wear a veil and a pair of uh, surgical gloves and a t-shirt and just have them crawling all over you. And they're not aggressive, you're not being stung. If you want to see that bee beard in person, Walter does it every year right around the 4th of July holiday. So beside their location right here at Olmstead Falls, they also have one at the West Side Market. So check out Jorgensen's Apiary there as well. Up next, we are taking a stop at an old fire station for dinner. Welcome back. You better come hungry when you visit Grand Pacific Junction here in Olmstead Falls. There are so many great restaurants to come and enjoy, including our next stop, which just so happens to be an old fire station. Moosehead Hoof and Ladder is a sister restaurant to Moosehead Saloon, the original one, which was created 21 years ago in Westlake. And we were asked by Clint Williams to come here. It's a restored firehouse. Uh, hence all the fire memorabilia, and um, we're just family owned and operated, and try and um, make every customer a regular customer with good, consistent food. It's um, a diverse menu, just um, we're known for our burgers and ribs. We have a variety of specialty sandwiches and salads. We thought if we, you know, pretty common items, casual items, but take them a notch up. No, you know, every, we prepare everything, no frozen foods, nothing like that. Everything is made fresh, in-house. That's our porky sandwich. Uh, the pulled pork is made fresh here um, every day. And um, with our secret barbecue sauce um, and our homemade um, hand-cut chips, which make the chips and the fries fresh here every day as well. And then next we have our blackened tuna salad. Um, which is, you can have it lightly or more well blackened and it's served on a bed of lettuce with um, tomato, basil relish and some dried cranberries. Our Melwood burger was actually made by one of our regular customers from Westlake and it was her favorite which is just um, a burger uh, with cheddar cheese, barbecue sauce and the crispy onion straws. So that has been on our regular menu for the last few years. And it being the uh, original fire station built in 1940 during the WPA, uh, uh, it, it had a great history and so we, we, we followed on that theme. And it was really two small buildings. This was a small building up front where they would pull in a fire engine and there was a maintenance building in the back on the river. So we saw a real chance here. The river being the big draw, a patio overlooking Rocky River, looking down 70 feet. That is the old hose tower, and that was that's original. That was here. I added a few things to it, but when the truck backed in, they would grab the hoses and pull them way up the, up into the tower there, and that's how they would dry. And they uh, every they do it at the same. Every every firehouse does that. We have two outdoor patios, a front patio faces um, Columbia Road, and then the back patio is what um, overlooks um, the Rocky River, which is, um, is very popular. You know, people will wait one or two hours to sit back there. 
Moosehead Hoof and Ladder is open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. It's also a great place to host your next party. And just in case someone forgets to bring a gift, all they have to do is walk across the street. Our next stop says it all in the name, Dolls and Minis. And Dawn, I must tell you, when I walked into your store, I just kept, it was another moment after another one of me going, oh my gosh, really? Are you kidding me? You have that? <laughs> Do you get that reaction when people come in here? All the time. It doesn't matter what part of the store they go into, they, they're just shocked when they walk in the door with everything in, that's in here. There's over 20,000 miniatures in here for the dollhouse. Their scale, one inch equals one foot, most of them. So the idea is when you put a room together, it looks just like a real room if you show a photo to someone. You take a picture of it and send it and think, this is my new living room. Nope, it's just in my miniature house, my dollhouse. And you can make it anything you want. It doesn't have to be a dollhouse. We do room boxes that are just one room. We do um, just little settings, little dioramas. So you must get all different types of customers in here then. Some I do. just wanting to play and then others who might be using it for their jobs even. Yes, we get architects that come in here. If they're doing something, we have um, People that are, their sons and daughters are still in school and they've got to do a diorama for sure. social studies. Well, so let's look at some of these here. This is just one of the many aisles in the store. You look at this and you can't believe how much detail goes into these miniature pieces. Right. I mean, this is just a little bell. I mean, do you have everything you could possibly imagine for a house? Pretty much everything you can think of is uh, in here that you would find in a real house, a school. The, the desks, the books. Anything, yeah, anything so that you can think of. You also have the dollhouses downstairs I too? I do. They're, they're mainly for people to look at. Okay. And um, just to kind of see, get an idea of what they might want to yeah, do. Yeah, and some of them are kits, so they're built up and they can see how big they are, because most people think they're not going to be as big as they actually turn out to be. Sure. So, um, well, so then, what is over on this side here? This is something totally different. Well, this is Fairy Gardens, and it's pretty much the same thing, because they're miniatures, except mm -hmm. they're done outside in the garden. So you can put together, a kind of construct a different and they're meant Settings. to go outside. Like little chairs, and then you have the little fairies. What else do people come in and they think Well, on? they like the little houses, mm -hmm. and they just will build normally around a theme. So if you're doing a farming theme, you've got a little barn down there. If you're doing just a little village, you've got little village type houses or a log they're cabin. So um, I just love how beautiful unlike they are. Unlike with the miniatures, the regular miniatures, these aren't a certain scale. So they, they can, can be, be anything, okay. any size. And then if someone says, well, how does that fairy get in there? They're magic. <laughs> They're magic. That's how it that yes. happens to have an easy They're magic. They're magic. So they can shrink themselves down to now, fit in any way. You don't need a certain scale for these ones. Now you have people come in, they purchase things, but you also have people come in and they have Playdates, so to speak. They do. We have um, a miniature club um, that has between 30 and 40 members. It's adults, and they will come in and learn a little project every every month, once a month, March through November. Now, the other interesting thing when you walk downstairs are all of the doll clothes, and I know those are a big seller for you. They are. Um, we have clothes from four inches up to 39. I've been making porcelain dolls and repairing dolls for nearly 30 years, since 1989. So you can bring in a broken doll that, you know, was a treasure, mm -hmm. maybe when you were younger, and we can put her back together and make a new, find a new outfit. I try them on all the 18 inch dolls that I know exist, so it doesn't matter which doll they have, the clothes downstairs will fit. There's really something in here for everybody. I know there's games over there. You have stuffed animals on the wall. It is a place, bring the family in. The kids will go nuts. I just saw a couple of kids come in here now and they're already rifling through things. They're probably playing on the play table. Everybody so. loves the store. They do, they do. So it's dolls and minis. It is. Right here in the main drag. Yeah, you can't miss us. You can't miss it and no. you don't want to, that's for sure. Up next, the busiest spot on a hot day. We'll be right back. Do you like chocolate syrup or I caramel? Like, I like caramel, but I like chocolate too. Okay, oh I'll, my fix, gosh. I'll fix you right up. This is not something you want to eat if you're uh, trying to lose weight, huh? Guarantee you will be back. <laughs> oh, wow.
welcome back. A trip to Olmstead Falls would not be complete without a stop at one of the busiest locations here. It's time for a sweet cold treat. This is the best kept secret when it comes to ice cream. Am I right, Bob? Yes, you are. We are here at Falls Ice Cream. <laughs> and let me tell you, this door has been going open, shut, open, shut, because people just can't get enough. No, of they your can. ice cream. They can. So you've been around for 11 years, is it? Going on our 11th year, yes. And when it comes to ice cream, there's all different flavors. Yes, we deal with roughly 80 flavors. 80. 80. So I'm guessing seasonally you change some out? There's like about 15 to 20 that we keep constantly in the case. Mm -hmm. The rest we switch out. So what did, which is one you keep constantly in the case that uh, we could maybe make something up with I today? think it's your favorite, the salty caramel truffle. Did you know that was my favorite? Yes, did I you, did. Because huh? I was a little sneak. Oh, <laughs> I am telling you, you have just made my day. All right, but, uh, let's not waste any time. Let's All right. get to it. Okay, let's get a bowl show me, here. Show me how this is done. So you, um, you guys have, you've been here 11 years. Th this building that you're in, I know a lot of these are historic buildings, but some have been brought in. Has this always been here? It's been here because it used to be the hotel's stable and carriage house. Wow. And this used to be all open, but they uh, revamped the building, put walls in, made stores out. It's so beautiful here. I just love this town. I'm going to love it that much more after I get this. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get your salty caramel truffle here. Okay. So that's step one. That's step one. That's the big one. I saw on the, the uh, front here that you have some non-dairy ice cream we as well. We have non-dairy, no sugar added, and yogurt and sherbets. And we also carry a line of sorbets. Oh, wow. A sorbet is a citrus form of ice. Uh, we sell a lot of it to people that can't have dairy products. So we have a little uh, variety of everything for everybody. Oh, that looks so good. You're putting more on? Oh, geez. Well, let me tell you. You know, every... you put whatever you put on there, I'm going to eat. So I know you. So don't, <laughs> so don't keep loading too much, or I'm going to be in trouble with a stomach ache today. Well, I'm going to make you smile oh, wow. as you exit. I'm already smiling. I'm very one happy. One thing about us here, we have one size scoop. And everybody will leave here with the same amount of weight of ice cream, depending on the ingredients. Okay. We weigh everything. We weigh everything. All right. Yes. All right. So you weigh that out. All right. So once it's weighed. Okay. See there? You're right on the button for a big Sunday. I'm ready for this. What's the next step? <laughs> He's, you can tell how excited I am. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go with the chocolate syrup. Do you like chocolate syrup or I caramel? I like caramel, but I like chocolate too. Okay. Oh I'll my fix, gosh. I'll fix you right up. Do you see how much is on there? This is not something you want to eat if you're uh, trying to lose weight, huh? Guarantee you will be back. <laughs> I have a feeling I will. So this is a place, if you're bringing the kids, come here and shop for the day. This is their sweet treat. This is their little reward. And we do not skimp. You do not. You clearly do not. Okay. Well, I'm not Look done yet. You're not done. I'm not done yet. Whipped cream. You want to put it on? It is a Sunday, right? So we got to have whipped cream. Oh my gosh. So this is one of the favorites of a lot of people when yes. they come in. Yes. I was fine with just the ice cream. No, no, now no, you're, no. Now no. you're making it. No, 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 no. Is, we got to keep up the, to our standards. This is the cherry on top, which I'm guessing you're putting a cherry on top of this too. Yes. <laughs> so. You and your daughter have kind of teamed up to make this happen. Yes. I've always wanted an ice cream store. Mm -hmm. So when I retired, we took this. And, and now I feel like you're, you're far from retirement now. That's all you do is work. <laughs> oh, man. Bon this is trouble. Bon appetit. <laughs> In trouble is what it is. All right, I'm gonna try to sift through this and get to the bottom of this. And while I do that, I'm gonna send you over to a place where you can find something old, something new, and something repurposed as well. That sounds like a sounds winner good? to me. This is a winner. Timeless Treasures here is, um, it's all vendors. 
and uh, they have lease spaces. They choose the amount of space they would like to have and they come in, they have um, the opportunity to use artistic abilities and uh, they, are what, they have done this place wonderful. It's just beautiful here and I'm so proud of every one of them. Yeah. We have 18 of us here and each one has their own little shop that's in a, in a shop. <laughs> we have shops in a shop. <laughs> This building is, was built in 1895. It was a family home. It was in 1895. Isn't it amazing? And it's so beautifully well taken care of. We have uh, 14 rooms, and um, as we walk around, uh, you'll be able to see the different areas and how they're done. We have home decor, and we have gift items. We have, we have just a selection of beautiful linens and um, I mean, almost anything a home, you, you would want for a home. We have painted furniture, which is the highlight. That's the highlight of this place is painted furniture. And uh, right now, you know, the painted furniture is a French thing. So people are into Paris big time right now. So the, fr the painted furniture goes over very well you know, here. Uh, but also they buy, they buy all dishes, they buy uh, linens, they buy uh, pictures, it, it, you know, everything, uh, you know, for a home. This is two of our vendors, they are friends and they have split a room. And everything in here they have hand done, they have hand painted and uh, uh, actually they bought that. A buffet for me, the one that gets the wall there, they bought that buffet for me and that was just an oak finish and they did that to it. Isn't that amazing what they've done to it? And the one behind um, over here, this one is just amazing how they've taken an old piece that was really what some people would say was done in and uh, they've made it beautiful. Timeless Treasures is just so nice because we've got new and old together and for the ones who love the old things we we display those and for the ones that love the new we also display those and this gives people like an avenue to decorate their home with old and new or all new or all old and so it's wonderful to be able to come to a place where you can see things your mother had your grandmother had and um, just a wonderful, it's just a wonderful thing. I love it because I've always done this. I did flea markets, I've done, um, I've done this all, nearly all my life and my mother did. And we've just always loved it. I remember when I was a young child, we'd go to, at that time, they called them rummage cells. And we'd carry big bags home and just, my brother and I, we just have so much with toys. We would look at all the toys, you know, we'd have so much fun with toys. It's just come together. And I just enjoy it so much because it's just what I love. And I, and not only do I love it, but the girls that are in here, they love it. And we have one man, his name is Robert, and he's here also, he's a floral designer. And uh, we just love what we do. We have our garden furniture, and um, this is called the Picket Bench and the Picket Chairs. Uh, they're wonderful to display flowers on or to sit on. They're plenty uh, worthy of sitting on. They're well made, and uh, a vendor in here makes those. And uh, we have the um, box there. That's a beautiful flower box, tool box. I mean, you put anything in there you would like. Um, herb box, herbs, you know, and the ladders here. These are wonderful to hold our linens. Um, if you have um, things in your kitchen, you would like uh, towels, dish towels, or in a bathroom, you'd like hand towels on. These are just wonderfully made, and they're, they are homemade. The price points are wonderful. Everyone comes and tells us our prices are just wonderfully priced. Things are wonderfully priced. And, um, just, our people are very happy with us here, I think. <laughs> We've told that. <laughs> when they come through that door, they go, wow, you know, and that's a wow factor. It's, you know, it's just, I think the gals have done such a good job. It's just, 
how did you get this together? Because when I came here and opened that door with Mr. Clint Williams, it was an empty house and I was like, wow, what are we gonna do with this? And to have all those vendors together, they just did it. They just did it. And I'm so proud of every one of them. Timeless Treasures is closed on Monday, so keep that in mind. They do have inventory that's constantly changing, so it is going to be a place you want to stop by often. Okay, up next, it's tea time. Clementine's is a Victorian tea room. We don't only specialize in our teas, but we also specialize in our food as well. Welcome back. We have time for one more stop here in Grand Pacific Junction. We are taking you back in time and sitting down for a Victorian tea. Clementine's is a Victorian tea room. We don't only specialize in our teas, but we also specialize in our food as well. We have a full menu. Actually, we have a lot of our soups that are made from scratch, our salads. We make all of our own dressings here. We have quiches. We have our beef burgundy. We make a meatloaf, which was actually my business partner's mom's recipe from many years ago. So it's very, very good. We have our green teas, our black teas, and we have some fruity teas. Our fruity teas, which are decaf, and then some of our loose teas also come in decaffeinated as well. Our traditional high tea here at Clementine's we serve all day long, as long as we have a 24-hour notice, because our pastries come from our bakery, which is in Hinkley, and we specialize in our own chicken salad, our own roast beef. We do have a turkey wrap and our fresh desserts. High tea is very, very popular around here, not only for baby showers, wedding showers, rehearsal dinners, but friends that come in here for a long, long time with their daughters, even when they were babies, and they still come back just to do their traditional high tea here. I just think it's just the environment itself. It's a beautiful place, it's very quiet. Our room upstairs holds 45 to 50 comfortably. When they come here, they don't have to rent the room, they just come and they usually have it between three and three and a half hours. Um, they, it's great, they love it. When Doris opened many years ago, um, there are several girls that are still here with Doris. They don't want to leave. They love Doris. Doris is a great boss to them. And they're, they're just, they're good employees. They're honest employees. And I wouldn't want it any other way. We're a good team. We've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> right. About 19 to 20 years. Yeah. And we haven't killed each other yet. No. <laughs> We're making a pear apple salad. What has romaine lettuce, pears, apples, uh, pecans and also blue cheese with marinated chicken on it. And this starts off in fall and we thought we wouldn't be doing it anymore but people have demanded us so we continue to pair ours with it. Our customers, that I just enjoy their company. I could stand or sit and talk to them for hours. I do, I'm a people person, so I like that. Clementine's is open seven days a week. Well, that does it. We're wrapping up here. Isn't this just adorable? I absolutely love it, and I think that this is a great place that if you maybe have some out-of-town guests that are coming in, you can bring them to. We're very close to the airport here. Come enjoy the day, sit back, relax, eat a little bit, shop, and just enjoy. I'm Natalie Herbick, and I'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland. Great. All right. Three, two.